Hi and welcome to Jessie James Beads. My name is Jem and today we'll be looking at the February 2024 Magical Mystery Bead Box. If you're waiting to open your box and you don't want to see a preview, close your eyes for a moment, but then we will get cracking making something beautiful together. Let's head down to the board and take a look at what we're getting this month. Let's take a look at the contents of this month's Magical Mystery Bead Box. La Dolce Vita, we've got lemons and basil or basil, tomatoes or tomatoes, unmistakably Santorini there, a glass of something beautiful. What a gorgeous colour combination. Let's flip that over. You can see already we've got some amazing names for bead mixes, strands and much, much more. So let's pull that one out of the way and take a quick look through the box. Let's have a look at our first strand. I can only imagine this must be Tomato Girl. Look at those colours. Such a fun piece. Beautiful, highly detailed beads there. I'm in love, absolutely in love with these little birdies. So that's the first one. La Dolce Vita bead mix. We are 100% going to be working with this bead mix today. Look at those gorgeous colours. Fantastic. That's one I'm going to keep hold of. Let's see what's next. Here we go. Amalfi Gardens. That's another gorgeous bead mix with some beautiful sagey colours. It's I love how the metallics tone differently with different colours. So I've got golden tones I'm going to work with. And then you've got silver tones with your greens. Let's pop that one out of the way. Next up we have the Mediterranean Lemonade, which is just over here. Wow. That got exciting quick. Mediterranean lemonade. Let's take a quick gander. I can see some hints of blues, ivories, yellows. Gorgeous. I might work with that one later on in the month. Check those out. In addition, we have our Santorini Beach which is a beautiful bead mix of blues. If you've ever seen photos and images of Santorini, it's the perfect colour combination. That's very eye-catching indeed. Basket weaving in Rome. Rome's definitely a city I'd love to visit as well. My son and I will go there one day, I'm sure. Barcelona sunset pendant pair. Always makes me think of the wonderful Freddie Mercury and Montserrat Caballé. Absolutely fabulous gorgeous colours there as well. You've got leather cord complete with those end caps and then you have got on the vine golden chain and I'm going to be showing you that a little bit more detailed in just a moment because we're also going to be working with this. So how do you fancy making this necklace with me today. We've got layers, we've got movement, we've got all of that glorious gold. It's making me think ahead to a promise of summer. Let's head down to the board and make it together. So this is our tasting menu and our ingredients list today consists of La Dolce Vita bead mix, Barcelona Sunset Pendant and On The Vine Gold Chain. I'm going to be adding in some simple 18 gauge round wire. I've chosen to work in silver today because I really like the contrast between the silver and the gold colourways. It's nice and bright. You can obviously choose whatever colour metal you want to work with but we're going to start off by taking a look at a little bit of the wire just to begin with and I'm going to trim away about four or five inches just to get us started. So what we're going to do is to find a way to connect our beautiful Barcelona sunset pendant onto that gorgeous on the vine gold chain. So let's give this a shimmy. Can you hear this okay? taking it to the microphone to give it a shimmy as I love sound in jewellery. What we're going to do is look for the central point on that chain. So I'm just going to grip the loops at either end and just lay that down for a second. And in the midst of all those gorgeous golden toned marquise shapes, you'll find a loop which is the central loop on your chain. So let's have a look at our wire. It's probably around about four inches of that 18 gauge round. I'm working in silver colour 
and I'm just going to give that a smooth and warm through to ensure that it's good and ready to work for us. Let's also ensure that that first end is flush cut just to make sure that everything stays neat and tidy. I'm going to work with my multi-step bail making pliers and I'm going to use probably loop number three just to create a round form. So once I've got that round form I'm going to pop underneath that with my bent nose chain making pliers and just pull the wire away so that you have a circular form on the end and we're going to ensure that the cut end meets that angle. You can just close it up if it's not entirely perfect. I'm going to give that a really good squish just to ensure that that's really solid and strong. And then we're going to open that up. The first thing I'm going to do is grab from my Dolce Vita bead mix one of these lovely pendants and I'm going to use the face that has had that little sort of darkening effect. I'm going to slide that one into position first and then I'm adding the sunset pendant. Just going to put one of those behind and then we'll close that little open and closable loop up. Now you may notice that it's not exactly symmetrical, that I've put more of a bend at the front and that's just because I think in wear it's slightly more comfortable to have more loop at the front. I'll show you what I mean by being symmetrical. You could centralise that if you wanted to but I, as I say, like to have a little bit more sticking out at the front. So what we're then going to do is add a bead to create a bit of a drop. So from the Dolce Vita mix, we're going to add one of these gorgeous peachy toned faceted rondelles. They've got that lovely effect over the top. And then we're going to grab our bent chain nose pliers again, just above the bead. And I'm going to protect that bead with my thumbnail whilst I bring the wire forwards. And I think in this instance I'm going to use number two on those bail makers to create a round form. Now you'll note we have a lot of wire left over. Don't fret, we're going to use that in just a moment. Now that's not a very nice circular form, so you can take a little bit more time to get that perfect. Trim away with the flush side of your cutters. And then before you add it onto your chain, just ensure that the cut end sits neatly against the bead opening. Give that a nice hearty squish and a squeeze to make it lovely and strong. What we're going to do then is open it up as if it was a jump ring. Find that central loop that we talked about and you might like to do that with a set of tweezers. If it's easier for you, I'm just going to run that hook we've just created through that central most loop. If it's not perfectly centralised, don't you fret. It doesn't really matter. Closing that up, giving it a squish and a squeeze to keep it in position. And the next section, we're going to add in a couple of these pieces like so. Now, I've just realised that I didn't pop my bead caps onto that central bead, which I did on my display piece. So at the end of the tutorial, I'll put a photograph up and you can see both with and without the bead caps. It's absolutely up to you if you choose to use them or not. What we're going to do now is find a point around about an inch to an inch and a half away and try to create an equal distance where we're going to add in one of these lovely golden toned pendants on either side. Now I'm going to grab hold of that scrap wire that we had left over and again it's 18 gauge round wire medium temper and I'm going to create an oversized emergency jump ring. If you have lar large jump rings to hand already then that's absolutely fine but if you don't you can create an emergency jump ring with your bail making pliers. Rotate the wire around until you form a spiral and it needs to be just more than two turns. We're going to then use the flush side of those cutters like so flip those cutters over and cut into the next spiral around. There you've got one emergency jump ring and you've got just enough of a crossover to create a second emergency jump ring. So let's trim that nice and safely. I do put my fingers in the line of fire because I like to protect my camera because it's expensive. And then I'm going to turn it over on the other side, again ensuring that the flush side of my cutters is what makes the two ends meet. And you'll see that you have a really quite a neat little emergency jump ring ready to go. So I'll just show you on one side. Open that up 
It's an emergency jump ring and just make sure that when you add this into your design, you pop them on the same length away from that central pendant and then add the second one in on the second side. I will add that in in a moment to enlarge your chain. Now this chain was just about two inches short of my neck size. So you can either very, very simply add in an extender chain of your choice, or you can add a little bit more wire work to the end. So I'm just going to find the last loop. Might be helpful if I grab that with my pliers, shake and shimmy those out of the way. And then what we're going to do is a very simple connector. So going back to my little reel of that 18 gauge wire, I'm going to trim away maybe three inches, probably more than we need. Going to start with a nice flush cut and then just warm that wire through. We're going to create a little bit of an extender bar. So warm that through nice and safely. We're going to start by creating a circular form. I think I'll go for number three because I want to add a clasp in on the end. So having a slightly larger circular form isn't a bad idea. And then I'm going to just pull that wire away. This time we're looking to keep that as centralized as possible. So if I push that very, very gently over, we're looking to have a circular form with a straight line coming away from it. Give that a really hearty squish. Now you can of course go for a wrapped loop if you prefer, but I'm just showing you simple loops today. So that is going to hook into the end of your chain. And again, you would repeat exactly the same process on the other side. Give that a squish and a squeeze. And then we're going to add in your preferred bead order. And I'll try to remember to do them all this time. So I'm going to go for one of the very, very fancy bead caps. And then one of these gorgeously faceted barrels with a central, almost orange carnelian look. That's a round faceted, another barrel faceted, and a second one of those lovely, elaborate, floral inspired, what are they called? They're called bead caps. You know, when your brain stops braining, that's what happened. The benefit of using bead caps is that they really do add a level of protection to your last bead. Turn that wire away. And then if you remember, we used number three, I think it was to create a loop. Again, you could go for a wrapped loop if you prefer, but I'm just going to go for open and closable loops today and just give that a little bit of a strengthen when I've got that nice and set. Let's get that out of the way and into the scrap pot. Closing that loop up, ensuring the cut end sits adjacent to that angle change. Give it a really good squish and a squeeze and repeat on the other side. I'll pop a photo of the two necklaces that I've got from this beautiful collection up as an outro to today's video.